Jesus is alive and well. On today's show, you're going to see kingdom work, you're going to hear about the kingdom work, and you're also going to hear about how you can be a part of it. I'm Mariah Berryhill, and this is Mission Messiah. when ISIS was right at the door of the town we were at. <laughs> I got another question for you here. When did you first come to the Lord? When is the church going to be the church? It's, it's advanced terror is what that is. <laughs> you really start seeing and understanding that He is in everything. You know, Paul tells us over in uh, 1 Corinthians down in chapter 9 that we need to consider this life a race. Basically, get in the race and run so as to win the race. Now that's a, that's a thing that every man needs to hear, Brant, is number one, get in the dadgum race and run the race to win. In other words, put everything into that race that you can possibly put into it to ensure your victory. Paul Evans' huge selection of in-stock hardwood, vinyl, tile, and carpeting lets the Paul Evans customer fall in love with their actual floors instead of having to choose off of a tiny sample. Here at Paul Evans Flooring, we love big. Big rolls of carpet big pallets of flooring, and of course, big savings for you. From budget to unbelievable, Paul Evans has the perfect floors for your home. Dr. Bartlett, thank you for taking this time with us. We know you're busy. Well, this is special to be with you, Jamie. Well, God is on the move, like the song. He is on the move, and we're seeing uh, events that have never been able to happen before, doors opening, uh, to, you know, God's heart is for the down and out. And so when he had me go to Iraq in November of 2014, okay. when ISIS was right at the door of the town we were at, and nobody right. knew that they were in Mosul, 30 miles away from us for 10 days. And miracles happen when you're in the right place at the right time, if he calls you to be there. Indeed. You've it's, seen some. I've seen it. So I've seen the down and out, the Yazidi. Uh, yes. which are, a, uh, that is a religion in North Iraq. That's where it was um, started, founded for thousands of years. Mm -hmm. Out and out uh, worshiping a fallen archangel is what they describe him, out of fear. And the basis of their religion is fear-based. Mm -hmm. And they had never heard the gospel. And I saw miracle after miracle, people brought out of bondage and out of demon possession. Uh, into life and gratefulness and they had nothing and they'd lost everything but they were so thankful when the Lord when they met Jesus Christ I wasn't uh, looking for anything other than telling people the best news in the world mm -hmm. which is the gospel amen the good news the good news the best news in the world and to uh, meet needs do the best I could Mm -hmm. And so we showed up there, and uh, it was a Sunday that we arrived uh, in Iraq, North Iraq. Mm -hmm. Took the, plan, the the van ride down Mosul Highway towards Mosul uh, to go. ISIS is out there. ISIS is out there in the sand, <laughs> hiding around us, and uh, we uh, get within 12 miles of Mosul, and then you got to make sure you don't miss that right turn. And so <laughs> they kept talking it's sharp, about it. It's a sharp turn. We heard about that many times before we got there, that we got to make sure we don't miss that turn, or we'll end up in the middle of uh, ISIS headquarters wow. in Mosul. And so we uh, took the right turn, ended up in Duhok, Iraq. Um, it was a, uh, the people group there are the Kurds, which call themselves the descendants of the Medes yeah. and cousins of Israel. That's how they identify themselves. Wow. And, uh, Cousins of Israel. Yes, and they uh, were in desperate straits. They knew that they were in a, a fight for survival for their lives. Mm -hmm. They weren't fighting for just their homes or their but cars. Their Literally, ISIS was sweeping across Syria and Iraq at that time, mm -hmm. and they were uh, uh, rape killing, pillaging, crucifying, beheading, anything that was horrific and beyond human. It was demonic, uh, the things that were happening, and the Kurds with 
basic uh, weapons, uh, just rifles and pistols were uh, fighting ISIS that had the tanks and everything that the Iraqi soldiers had left behind. And so they were fighting a, a giant. We showed up and went to a Methodist church that night. The first night we landed in Duhok was a Sunday. So that night service, me and three nurses and uh, another couple uh, were on my team for the whole 10 days. And we went to the Methodist church for uh, their service. 20 people still going to the church. Most people had left the country or were not and going run. to the church. Yes. They were getting out of Dodge. Yes, and we had some guests that were sleeping in the streets and in the church and in the abandoned buildings and parks that were the Yazidi people that had been surrounded by ISIS on Sinjar Mountain. And so in, Oct in August of 2014, the whole world's watching CNN right. talk about these people on a mountain surrounded by ISIS uh, that are about to, it's impending genocide is what Anderson Cooper said and he described I I the Yazidi as a people who he, he said quote they're like Christians they believe in God and they believe in Noah's Ark and that's where he left it well they are not Christian uh, the Yazidi religion is a different religion entirely yeah. uh, but God loves them yes he does and so we uh, were in this Methodist service and we heard Everything's in Arabic, so we're uh, praying and mm -hmm. singing mm -hmm. and listening to Arabic songs and and scripture being read in Arabic. Don't understand yeah. anything, but Not we can. Word. And then they ask the nurses to come and give a two-minute testimony, and they give their two minutes, and then I am to close it. And we have Yazidi in the audience in the mm -hmm. church, and the 20 mm -hmm. still faithful that are coming that night. Right. And I say, you know, God loves you. He loves all of us, and He uh, answers prayer. You had and an interpreter. Yes, everything's through interpreters, and everybody there speaks three or four languages, except moi. <laughs> so we have the translator. Uh, everything uh, that happens in most of these countries that I go to is through translators, because most of the places I go to do not speak English. Gotcha. Uh, but uh, we, uh, I said, you know, if, if something's bothering you, come up and we'll agree with you, we'll pray with you. Mm -hmm. God does answer prayer. And so this young 20-year-old uh, Yazidi girl comes up and I had just learned what the Yazidi believed several days before the Lord allowed me to understand that. Okay. And so I knew what her so background what, was. What are some of the principal tenets there? Then? The principal tenets are they know that there is, a, that God, there is a good God who created everything and He won't hurt anybody. He loves people. He's nice. Okay. And then there's this fallen archangel who's mean, who will hurt people. For thousands of years, out of fear, the parents have taught their children, generation after generation for thousands of years, to worship that fallen archangel so that he won't get mad at them and hurt them. And so that is the basis, uh, the foundation. And, well, that just starts the process. Wow. And so this young lady, uh, she, uh, I found out she literally was on Sinjar Mountain and she was surrounded by ISIS and she ran 70 miles across the desert to Duhok with all the other people that were in that city, 70,000 people ran that survived. Seven. Walked, ran, fell yeah. uh, 70 miles. Some of them would catch a ride here and there, but they ended up in Duhok where we were. Right. And so she uh, said, I said, what's bothering her? And she says, well, I, I go unconscious, I fall down, and I have no warning, and it's happening more and more frequently, and I, I don't want that to happen anymore. And I was thinking, well, I wouldn't want that either. People are chasing her across the desert, day and night. She has nothing but the clothes on her back, loved ones murdered all around her, neighbors murdered all around her, just running for their lives in terror from, the, from terrorists. And, uh, and so I was, that's a desperate need. So me and the nurses, just like uh, God's word says in James, it says if anyone's sick among you and they ask for help, uh, anoint them with oil, lay hands on them, and God answers the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous person. So all we do is that act of faith and we don't heal, Jesus heals. Amen. Uh, so, you know, just like in medicine, I give medicine, but God heals. Amen. Did um, you get that? We just simply obey the word. We just simply obey the word, and God does what He says He'll do in His yeah, word. That's right. Amen. Okay. That's right. And so I, uh, me, and and the nurses put a little oil on our hands. I just happened to have some oil uh, that I, uh, and so we, as soon as we touch her, boom, she's she hits the tile. Um, she 
had landed with her head tilted. We put her there and they tried to wad some clothes up and put her head down. Her head, you push her head down, her legs go up. She is rigid. A little rigid. Rigid. And <laughs> That's un, like a law. Uh, unconscious, unconscious. She, you, you don't see her wincing, blinking, not, no movement whatsoever. She is gone. And uh, so we, we're praying. I'm right by her on my knees. Ten minutes go by. I asked the elder that's in charge of the service, has this ever happened before? He says, yeah, one time, but it didn't last this long. He's concerned. We keep on praying. What do you do? Twenty minutes go by. Thirty minutes go by. After 40 minutes, a local lady, Muslim or Christian lady who goes to that church, comes from the back of the church to le reach over the chair. And I'm right here face to face. And the patient's right here. And she reaches down and takes a black cord off the girl's neck that was hidden. And she says, and she says, God told me to do that. God gives winning strategies. Amen. And he knows what the problem is you and he knows what it. string to pull to unravel the enemy's schemes. And she took that cord off that was hidden. Nobody knew it was there. Couldn't God see. told her. Only, only that woman. God, that woman heard the Lord and she obeyed. Took that cord off and then the girl still didn't open her eyes, but she starts moving for the first time in 40 minutes. Now she's grunting and growling and grimacing. Her eyes still haven't opened and nobody can hold her still even though they're trying. And she grabs her hair on both sides and she starts pulling and the, they're trying to get her fingers out and that's not gonna happen. And then she tilts her back, head back and lets a low howl out for over a minute. I have never seen anything seconds. like that, at least a minute. And I had never seen anything like that. And then her eyes opened for the first time. And she looked like she had had a heart attack. Pale, sweaty, Flush, clammy, yes. uh, weak. We sit her up in the front row of seats. Everybody's cheering. Uh, hallelujah. Is that something to get excited about? Hallelujah huh? is an international uh, language, uh, word, international word. People of all word. different. Uh, hallelujah. Everybody's hallelujah. yelling hallelujah. Giving God the glory. And you hear the victory chant. Oh, la, 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 la. The lady who took the cord off gets on her knees in front of her and is talking to her and in Arabic, and that girl's not saying anything. And then after about five minutes, I, I'm watching the whole thing because I'm right there. <laughs> and she you, said, and the girl sitting, the seat. girl that was delivered uh, says, Jesus. She whispers, Jesus. She doesn't speak English. That's the name. She doesn't speak English. She's never been uh, in church. She's never had a Bible. She's never had anybody teach her. Where did she get that? And then about a few minutes later, they're talking and she says, Jesus, louder. And then a third time, Jesus, louder and smiles real big. This is our first night there. Yeah. I wasn't planning on this and I don't look for this, but uh, <laughs> this is what happened. And I have witnesses. <laughs> I got another question for you here. When did you first come to the Lord? When is the church going to be the church? It's, it's advanced terror is what that is. <laughs> you really start seeing and understanding that he is in everything. Ship on over, ship on over. Zip, 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 zip. Zip Business Services is your source for color printing, signage, graphic art design, wide format printing, and custom embroidery. Zip Business Services is an authorized FedEx shipping location located at 943 North Grandview in Odessa. Zip on over. Zip, 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 zip. Let me, let me tell you, this, this is my favorite waitress in the whole world. <laughs> and you know what makes her so good? I think it's because she loves the Lord. Charlotte, when did you fall in love with Jesus? About three years ago, actually. Amen. Been going to church for 30 years, started going, and I love it. Amen. So yeah. what's different about that, that church you're going to? What happened to you? How'd that fire light in you? I don't I just guess just when I walked in, I was welcomed with open arms and... <laughs> Just the presence of the Lord. He took control of me. And yeah. Never been the same. Never been the same. Wow. <laughs> wow. Love it. Hallelujah. We love you. I love y'all. Yeah. And yeah. I appreciate y'all. Everybody knows Starla. Yeah. She's the star. I'm a star. Yeah. <laughs> Give, me. Give me five. <laughs> You hooked me again, Star. I mean, I used to love to come down to the Kermit Drive-In yes. when I met you there. You know, that's back, uh, you remember Manual Super Burger, don't oh, you? Oh, yes, I do, absolutely. <laughs> you probably built some biceps or something carrying those things. Yeah, 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 well, yeah. That was dark. <laughs>
And uh, what, what do you know about Mr. Massage, sir? Huh? Uh, I love our girls. I love the Mr. Massage. Uh, Jamie and his wife have done great work. The girls are great. Yeah. Some Sometimes. Some I talked to said it was pretty tough, but they made it, and they were so glad they did. Amen. Like Amen. Brooke. Like Brooke. That's right. Like Brooke. That's right. Brooke. Yeah. Uh -huh. I, we might catch her. Maybe she, I, we said we would maybe try to catch her. Yes. Yes, She's a really sweetheart. Yeah, she is. And, and there's such a change from when we when she first came to Michigan. Oh, I've seen a lot of change on a lot of women. Yes. They have really bad struggles. Yeah, amen. We love you, know, you Star. Because the Messiah, they made it. Yeah, and with amen. the Lord on their side, they made it. Absolutely. <laughs> we just help point them to the King. That's right. Amen. That's right. Bless you. Love y'all too. All right. All right. Bless day, everybody. So, what was your first car? It was a 1964 Volkswagen. It was a bug, and I loved that car. You know, that's interesting, because you've got a, you're, you're back to having a bug. I am, and I love it more today than I love that one. Well, that's because it runs. <laughs> There's you know, that. That's a, that's a big bug. Well, you know how, I, I, I don't know if I've ever what? told you about this, but here's how I learned. So, I, uh, my dad had found that bug, and right. I think he paid $300 for it. So, uh -huh. I, one day I came in, and I had been riding around in Mother's big old boat, and I said, hey, I need some gas money. and. Dad looks at me and he says, uh, there's a Volkswagen right there. And I said, but I don't know how to drive that. I don't know how to shift those gears. I don't know how to get that thing in gear. You didn't drive a standard. Not until that day. <laughs> <laughs> Learn by doing. That's exactly what he said. He said, if you want to go somewhere, Tammy, you have to put in practice what you've been watching. I had been watching him shift gears. He had even had his foot on the, the clutch and on the gas. Yeah, but I had been shifting this, but it was time to put put it in motion, and it was not pretty. No, no, no. Well, see, I learned how to drive in California. Okay. In San Francisco. Okay. In At least that's pretty. That's pretty. Yeah, but you try to juggle the brake, the clutch, the gears on a hill. Oh no! It is. It's it's advanced terror, is what that is. <laughs> I cannot begin to tell you. You know, the beauty of that, though, is that's how we learn, right? That's how we learn. I think about that when, when uh, that felt a little mean from Dad that day when he said, if you want to go any further, you get to go get in that car and you go do that. Yeah. But that was a life lesson, and you have to take chances. Yeah. But you have to be bold. You do have to be bold. And the beauty of that is as we do that with the Lord, He goes before us, He makes the way smooth, but we still have to take those steps to be bold and moving forward. That's right. If we're trusting in Jesus, He's going to navigate us in life, just as we navigate these roads. Well, and you're never navigating alone. You're right. In fact, my choice is to have Jesus in the driver's seat in life. Yeah. I'd yeah. rather him take the wheel. Like Gary Underwood said, Jesus take the wheel. There it is. Country music gal. Yeah. Jesus take the wheel and get me out of the trouble I've gotten myself into. Oh my gosh. <laughs> you know that same Volkswagen? Yeah. You know what I was driving one day? Oh. My front tire fell off. <laughs>
impressed me. Okay. And we were Having going, a revival? I mean, no, no. Meeting? We were just going to church there. And one day I was moved to go to the front of the church. to respond. And he baptized me. But it took me another 10 years to really, really come to know, to come to know Christ and, and the Lord. Yes. Amen. What's it been for you since? How long ago was that now, roughly? Uh, well, I, I found Catherine okay. and we married. We had a wonderful marriage, I know. And she came down with cancer. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I knew how bad she needed yes. me and the Lord. And that's when it became real. Yeah. Amen. Lost her anyway. Right. But, but I understand, I understand that. <clears throat> One of the things that uh, he did for her was comfort her. Praise God. Praise God. Yeah. Uh, Praise wow. God. When you shop at WOW, you're not only finding something special for yourself or a gift that you're desiring for someone else, you are blessing a mother and her children because this is all part of Mission Messiah and this is all part of their job training and their future means of provision. So thank you for partnering with us to be a blessing. So come see us at 815 North Grandview in Odessa on the corner of 8th and Grandview. Well, Stephanie from Tulsa wants to know what is Mission Messiah? Wow. <laughs> we love to answer that question, don't we? Stephanie, thank you for your inquiry. Look at the name, Mission Messiah. It is the work of the Messiah. Many years ago, 21 years plus, I began to feel that, that unctioning of the Lord. When is the church going to be the church? When are we going to see the lame walk? When, when are the blind going to see? When are the captives going to be free? And Stephanie, I, I was in turmoil in it because I wanted to see it. I, I, want, I stand and believe with all of my heart the Word of God. So why don't we see these things manifesting more often? So I committed myself and I said, Lord, lead us, show us how to be the church. Elizabeth, I'm here to tell you, for 21 years, we have been watching the Lord God Almighty do exactly what he says he will do in his word. And that's what Mission Messiah is all about. The word of God says that we renew the mind by the washing of the word. So it's a very intense program, 18 month program, 12 months on campus, six months off campus that a, that a woman commits herself to basically to find herself transformed from darkness into the marvelous light of our maker that she might go forth and show his praises. And I want to talk about that because he was talking about the renewing of the mind, y'all, and that's exactly what it is. This is not a rehab. It's so funny, I was talking to Amen. Lena King the that. other day, and she said, I would have come so much sooner. I always thought it was a rehab. My probation officer even presented it as a rehab, and I was not in a place where I needed a rehab. She said, had I known that this was a discipleship program where I got to learn about the Word of God and truly my life be changed, I would have been here years ago, but that's the perfect timing of God in this season. Our Lord told us that He didn't come just to give us life. He came that we might have life abundant. So really and truly, what Mission Messiah is all about is learning how to live life abundantly. Now, you've got to understand there are, there are different parts of Mission Messiah. Do you want to elaborate on that a little bit? Yes. Um, what you're seeing right now is Mission Messiah Television. So that's one. Then we have WOW, which actually stands for Women of Worth. And then we have SIP, which is Zeal, Integrity, and Purpose. And so we're going to cover all those bases and what you, how you can join and be a part of it. Absolutely. Because basically, ZIP and WOW are both work training programs. We watched our ladies for many years. They'd come through the program and they'd get near time to graduate 
and you could see they almost had that deer in the headlight look again, kind of a panic because, you know, before they got to the mission, there was no peace, there was depression, there was hopelessness. Now they have, they have come into a relationship with their maker and, and they're, they're loving that and they're covered and provision is made. But wow, can I do this when I leave here? And so as we begin to pray about that, we, the Lord began to show us that one thing we could do would be to help them in some job training, learning some skills. And so we actually developed those two businesses Mariah mentioned, WOW and ZIP. So what that looks like is three months into the program, the women begin to get to come to WOW or ZIP and train and uh, work on social skills and how to work on the computer. Um, some of these women did not even finish elementary, y'all, or get a high school degree, any of that. And so it really begins... Now some, we've graduated doctors. That is true too. We've graduated multiple nurses over the years. Yeah, and that's what I'm talking about, y'all. Sin and the enemy is not a respecter of person. Wow. I mean, these people were not just born into it. They just ha didn't have horrible parents. I mean, sometimes life gets hard. The enemy has his way in your life and there's destruction. So that's really no, what we focus on is people from all different ages, um, they come and that's they right. learn and they grow and you watch this transformation. So anyways, at three months, they get to start working and then they advance to a full time, uh, still having all their homework, their lessons, their teaching, everything. And it's it's pretty intense, but it's it's what life looks like. It really does it's real life. when it's you real live life. it with him. It really is. And then Mission Messiah Television is what the Lord impressed upon us to share what happens at Mission Messiah with the world that others might know him. Welcome back to Perspective. I'm Mariah Berryhill. And I'm Haley McBride. And I'm Lena Kay. So today, we want to talk about Proverbs 9, verse 10, and it says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. What do you think that actually means to fear the Lord? What does that look like to you, Lena Kay, in this time that you've been in at the mission and just what you've learned in that area? Um, well, at first, you know, you come in raw, so fear in the Lord is depleted completely. Yeah. <laughs> Um, now I know that he's in control over every moment and every every aspect of every moment. Um, and now that I know more of the word, he's in control of everything. He's in control over um, how the day goes, what's in the day. And if we can get out of ourselves long enough to focus in on him, you really start seeing and understanding that he is in everything. People lack understanding. They're lacking on so many different aspects of life in general and of understanding because they're not in the word. And Jesus is the word. And so if it says you will gain understanding by knowing the Holy One, that's just our encouragement is we say it like every week, just get in the word of God. If you don't understand, ask him to help you. But that's how you're going to start getting some kind of understanding. 